You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. And welcome back. Tom Hartman here with me, and, or with you, and with, with me on the line is uh, Sonali Kolhatkar, who is a, uh, a host over KPFK, uh, host and producer of the program Uprising on KPFK, Pacifica's morning uh, drive time program, uprisingradio.org slash home is the uh, email address. Sonali, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me on, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Um, so, uh, first of all, tell us about your program. Well, it's a daily radio program, much like yours, and we cover news that's important to ordinary people, news of the world, news about what our politicians are doing, but also environmental news, great uh, ideas that ordinary activists are taking on uh, solutions to our problems. We look at issues like immigration and racism and gun rights. We look at issues like uh, the strength of our democracy. We also look at international issues like war and uh, militarism and climate change. So it's a very broad we, we love to have artists in studio to talk about their work and how they contribute to you know, cultural issues and social ways of looking at things. It's a very broad range program, and the main idea is that conversations and dialogue between people can really strengthen our democracy by exposing us to new ideas. That's you know well said, and you have a wonderful program. Uprisingradio.org is is, you. is is the is the website. Likewise, for Tom. <laughs> well, bless you. Thank you. Um, now I understand that you are trying to take your show or working on not just you. There, there's a bunch of a group of people who are working on on bringing your program to free speech TV, and uh, and in fact, you wrote this this brilliant piece beyond Colbert: Why We Need Progressive People of Color on TV. Would you like to speak to those? Yeah, you know, it's so important, um, I think, for us to see the kind of demographics on our television screen uh, reflecting what we have in reality. And certainly we do have some diversity on our television shows, more so now than before. Um, but what I would like to see is people presenting the news, not just on network television where you have a little diversity, but on cable um, and serious talk shows, um, on late night shows, where a lot of people get their news. Um, I would like to see people be able to get their news from people they can relate to, not just politically, but also demographically, because those things are important. And, you know, of course, I was thrilled that Colbert is going to replace Letterman because of his politics as a progressive. That's very important to me. But at the same time, yet another white man. I mean, mm. Arsenio Hall has been the only non-white male to ever host late-night television, uh, and I believe there was a, a woman, uh, one white woman. And so that's a stunning lack of diversity, and that's just not right in a day and age when we are seeing uh, minority populations uh, together in an aggregate sense slowly become the majority. In some cities like L.A. and New York, they are already the majority, and we need to see that reflected on television, particularly when it comes to political discussions, because it's the host, as you well know, who sets the tone, who sets the agenda for what yeah. to discuss. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. And, and how do we best do that in a way that's not gratuitous? Well, exactly. It can't be tokenistic. It has to be smart people, and there's plenty of smart, amazing people out there. Melissa Harris-Perry is one of them, right? Um, and we need to, uh, another person that I cited in my article is W. Kamau Bell, an amazing African-American comic and um, social critic. He had a show on FX. Uh, they moved it to FXX, and ratings dropped. They took ratings dropped, and they took him off the air. We need to find smart people of color who have a lot to say, and there's plenty of them out there, and give them a chance and give them a microphone. Of course, our problem is we're not just dealing with um, uh, sort of gatekeeper attitude when it comes to race, but money. Right? Um, we have this huge corporate-funded media structure. And for people, new people, uh, to break into that structure, you need massive corporate backing. Uh, but we don't have that, those of us who are speaking truth to power. So we rely on things like crowdfunding, which is hugely challenging while you're also trying to produce and host a show. That's a daily yeah. show. Well, you have a project over at Indiegogo.com for, That's right, we for do. your show. We want to televise Uprising because Free Speech TV, um, the cable channel that also televises your wonderful program, approached us and said, we'd like to have Uprising on our channel. Uh, and so we looked around and said, well, we work at a radio station. We need TV equipment. Uh, yeah. We need cameras. We need a mixer. All of the hardware, but also the labor that goes into 
creating a video program out of a radio program. So we are asking the public who want to see not just greater diversity on the air, but also who like our program, uh, who appreciate it and want it to be exposed to potentially millions more viewers around the world uh, and the country to contribute to our campaign. We are just about halfway to our goal, but only nine days left in the campaign. And really, you know, when we think about what this is to millionaires, this is pocket change to millionaires. We need mm. 30 grand more. You know, pocket change to millionaires. Yeah. But if people give $10, $50, $75, $150, uh, and lots of people give, it adds up really fast. It enables us to televise a show, and it also makes us more accountable to a plethora of people rather than a single benefactor. And that makes us more accountable, and it makes the whole project more democratic. And we'll put a link over at TomHartman.com if there's not one already there. And, of course, UprisingRadio.org. I'm, I'm assuming you have a link right yeah, out to your right Indiegogo. Right on the page. Yeah, okay, of course. Um, the, one of the other issues, you were talking about money. And uh, one of the other challenges that I think people, who are, people of color who are offering programming are facing is... And, and what, what brought this to mind is, is this decision from the Supreme Court today that, that Michigan has banned affirmative action, basically, and the Supreme Court said that's just fine. Um, and, you know, I suppose in the best of all possible worlds, we would not consider race in, in any context. But the fact of the matter is that the average white family in the United States has wealth on the order of 80-some-odd thousand dollars. My numbers are a couple of years old, so they're probably off a bit, whereas the average family of color in the United States has wealth of around $5,000. And uh, the, the whole, there's, a, there's this entire um, spectrum of issues that come out of that, uh, from you know, the, the ability to, to, to start a show and, and self-finance it to, uh, to uh, well, just a whole variety. Would you like to speak to that? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, this is uh, a situation that is reflective of our overall wealth inequality. The kind of wealth inequality that exists today is unprecedented. And then if you look at communities of color, as is the case in so many indicators, um, you see a disproportionately large inequality. Um, and, and, of course, I, I, there's probably not even a handful of billionaires of color out there. So uh, when we're talking about the gap between wealth, wealthy and poor, um, it's, it's a very, very, very stark for people of color. And so this is really important. At the same time, as you have the Supreme Court justices, the majority of them imagining that they live in some kind of post-racial world, you have a situation where today the Koch brothers have uh, adopted this Libre initiative to try to woo Latino voters. President Obama, uh, his administration's uh, leadership in the Department of Homeland Security is saying they're reconsidering their deportation policies. As usual, come election time, um, both parties want to pander to the Latino vote, and they are trying to do what they can. And slowly and slowly over time, it's going, we're going to have a situation when those in power cannot ignore anymore the country's changing demographics. Um, the TV is so far behind that I really hope we catch up um, to a fair representation and start changing the dialogue to speed up the process whereby policies actually match the need. Yeah. Well, I wish you the very, very best. Uprisingradio.org is the, uh, the website home. Uh, of course, uh, the Uprising program can be heard on KPFK, uh, Pacifica's Morning Drive program. Uh, Sonali Kolhatar, am I saying that right? Kolhatar, almost. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank and you so much, Tom. You, you, are, you are doing such great work. And, and um, once again, people can contribute to, what, to you know, this effort to, to, get, to get Sonali's show onto, onto uh, Free Speech TV on TV over at Indiegogo. Uh, dot com. But you can find the link over on our, on our website at uprisingradio.org. Thank you so much for being with us. It's my absolute pleasure, Tom. I hope to join you on FSTV in the coming months. I, me too. I hope someday we can meet as well. Yes, I would love that. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. We'll be right back.